Hi, I'm Dr. Julie Steinauer, and I thought today we'd do a video and talk about what is stereopsis, or depth perception, as you probably know it. So I wanted to show you what it actually is. Well, kind of, as much as I can in a video. But here is a test that we commonly use. Now, there are lots of different ver versions of this. You might see one that has a fly where you can kind of pinch the wings as they pop off of the page. But you have to wear these special glasses. These glasses, when you put them on, allow your brain and eyes to be able to kind of work together to notice that something will pop up off of the page in 3D or three dimensions. And you'll be able to see it kind of almost like it's floating where you can pinch it or push it. Okay, so on this particular test, then we're able to see even for really young kids because we can look at something like these shapes. All right, obviously for adults, we're able to assess it with these. And this is something, again, for kids to be able to kind of make an assessment. So at a young age, we can assess whether or not a person has depth perception. Now, why is this important? Why do we care? And, you know, what do you need to know about it? Maybe you realize you don't have good depth perception. Maybe you go to grab something, you know, that is, um, I don't know, in a cabinet, and instead you, like, graze your knuckles and you, like, bloody your knuckles on the cabinet door. Or maybe you go to get a glass off of the table to drink, or your child does, and they knock it over instead. And you might just think, well, they're clumsy or they're less than graceful. But really, in actuality, that could be an indicator of them not having depth perception. What are some other things that tell you that a person doesn't have depth perception? Well, struggling to know how to stop the car, the distances, uh, maybe even how to do something like park and park in between the lines or parallel park, although that can kind of indicate some other things too, like spatial awareness. Other things could be um, kids who hesitate going down steps. Up is usually not a problem because up the steps look like they're coming towards you, but when you go down, if a person doesn't have depth perception and they're going down steps, it's like those steps fall off into an abyss. And that, you know, abyss is like, woo. They can be scared. So if your child is like really holding on to the rail and going like one foot at a time down the steps, that's an indicator that they don't have accurate depth perception, maybe. Now, another thing with little kids especially would be not wanting to go down slides or even not wanting to walk across grates or patterns like um, something that has like a cross hatch pattern. Maybe it would be even boards that have a space between them on, like on decking. Um, if they don't want to do those types of things, you could definitely think, well, there might actually be a depth perception issue for this individual. Obviously, if they're little and they're stacking blocks or something or they're trying and they're just never successful, you can know that probably there's a depth perception issue. So what are some other things then for adults? Well, it would be, again, struggling to maybe like with driving, judge distances between cars, um, maybe noticing like how far do you need to stop before. You might be more hesitant on stopping for a stoplight. Um, maybe multiple lines of traffic. You know, if you're on an interstate, could be confusing or really frustrating and scary for you if your depth perception is off. And if you're driving down a lane of traffic and you're like, I'm not really sure if that car is coming towards me or what's going on. That could also indicate a problem of depth perception and maybe a potential misalignment of the eyes. So depth perception is definitely something that's really important to a lot of skills, you know, things that you need to do in your daily living, particularly things that like, you know, could harm you like driving or um, walking up and down steps if you don't have normal depth perception. So it can be developed. It doesn't matter what age you are, depth perception can be developed. Um, so even if you are 50 or 60 years old and you say, well, I don't, I've never had depth perception because my eye turned, you can develop a certain amount of depth perception. And it's not true when they say that Eh, if it wasn't hardwired in at a certain age and you've missed that age range, you're just out of luck. That is not a true statement. And so it doesn't matter how old you are, you can actually develop death perception. Will you be able to develop it normal enough that you could go play baseball and be a fantastic player on a baseball team? Well, maybe not, but you can develop it at any age, no matter what the issues have been, typically. 
I will say there are some caveats on that. So obviously if someone's had like has a cataract or has um, amblyopia or some sort of um, extreme situation, there may be instances where depth perception isn't possible or like blindness in one eye. So I don't want to just say it's possible for everybody. But as long as there's no other kind of ex um, extreme situations going on with your vision, blindness in an eye or a cataract or something that's impeding the eye, uh, maybe even a disease process, then it should be something that you can attain. Now, in case you're wondering, well, I don't know, because my situation is this, and there's some specifics involved with, you know, maybe the problems that you're having with your vision. And we want to make sure that, yes, we could work with you and help you with that, or no, we couldn't because of the situation. Then you can contact us because I know it can get tricky and you just want to know, can I actually have death perception or not? So contact our office, especially if you're local at 618-288-1489. But if you're not local to us, so if you're not kind of within that driving range and you happen to be maybe even over overseas, then you can go to our website at um, visionforlifeworks.com and there are two options. The first option is that if you just want to ask some questions and find out a little bit about what's going on and if we could possibly help, then we encourage you to fill out the questionnaire. So it's a quality of life questionnaire. But if you're like, I already know what I have, I know what my condition is, I've been told that this can be treated and I want treatment, then you probably should go straight towards scheduling a consultation with us. Again, the, these two options are really only for the non-local people. Local people, pick up the phone and give us a call, okay? Um, and so if you're non-local, then go to our website. Uh, now, if you like this video and you like information that we put out regularly, we would say not only like the um, video, pass it on to your friends, but also subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you're able to see more of these videos as they get released. Thank you.